types of species to be conserved. 1. Listing of species International Union for the Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources, that is IUCN, have categorized some rare species of plants and animals in the list of endangered and threatened wildlife and the list of endangered and threatened plants. The two lists contain the names of all species of animals, plants and other creatures that have been determined to be in the greatest need of protection. The classification is based on certain factors such as present and past distribution of a particular species in a given area, the decline in their numbers over time, the quantity of natural habitat of the species, overutilization of a species for education, recreation, etc., and the value of the species in ecological terms. On the basis of the above factors, the following categories have been identified. 1. Endangered Species in danger of extinction due to decline in numbers and drastic change in habitat. For example, golden mole, pink pigeon, etc. 2. Critically endangered species Species that have an extremely high risk of becoming extinct. For example, Balearic shearwater duck, thick built parrots, etc. 3. Vulnerable Species with high chances of moving into endangered category in the near future. For example, hippopotamus, polar bear, etc. Endemic species Endemic species are those species of plants and animals which are found exclusively in a particular area. They are not naturally found anywhere else. A particular type of animal or plant may be endemic to a zone, country or a state Sal and wild mango are two examples of the endemic flora of Panchmari Biosphere Reserve. Bison Indian giant squirrel that is tall and flying squirrel are endemic fauna of this area. The destruction of their habitat, increasing population, and introduction of new species may affect the natural habitat of endemic species and endanger their existence. Now, do you know what are species? Well, species is a group of population which are capable of interbreeding. This means that the members of species can reproduce fertile offsprings only with the members of their own species and not with members of other species. Members of a species have common characteristics. Causes of Migration Various factors determine the causes of migration. In some cases, external pressures, temperature, drought and sometimes food shortage alone may cause the animals to seek better conditions. Let us try and learn something about the conditions that influence these animals to migrate. How do they communicate with each other and coordinate their mass movement? Hmm, that's something to think about. Orientation and Navigation 
scientific studies seem to indicate that salmon depend on the olfactory sense to locate and return to the same shallow little stream where they're hatched out from eggs. Plant-eating animals often follow well-established trails of plants and probably also use their sense of smell. Bats, whales and seals use echolocation to navigate in the dark or underwater. Migratory birds are said to use the sun, stars and geographic features as guides. Tools for studying migration There are various tools to study the pattern of migration in animals. The movements of migrating animals are often studied by tagging them. Since the 1920s, banding of birds, which is crimping a light coated band of metal or plastic around their legs before releasing them, has been carried on extensively. Of late, tagging of fishes, butterflies and many marine mammals is also becoming popular. The latest tags based on radar, sonar and radio technology are now used for following migrations, particularly of marine animals. Radio transmitters attached to whales or seals emit signals at regular intervals that can be picked up by weather satellites and transmitted back to a scientist on the ground. Recycling of Paper It is found that 17 full-grown trees are required to make one ton of paper. Paper can be recycled five to seven times for use maximum. Now, if each student saves at least one sheet of paper in a day, can you imagine how much paper can be saved? We should save, reuse used paper, and recycle it. By this, we not only save trees, but also save energy and water needed for the manufacturing of paper. Moreover, the amount of harmful chemicals used in paper making will also be reduced. So what do you think? Should we make a pact to save paper? All right. Reforestation The remedy to deforestation is reforestation. Now, reforestation is restocking of the forests by planting new trees. The planted trees should be generally of the same species which are found in that forest. We should plant at least as many trees as we cut. Reforestation can take place naturally also. Now, how is that? Well, if the deforested area is left undisturbed, it re-establishes itself. It's a natural process. In natural reforestation, there is no role of human beings. We have already caused tremendous damage to our forests. Don't you think so? So, if we have to retain our green wealth for future generations, plantation of more trees is the only option. In India, we have the Forest Conservation Act. This act is aimed at preservation and conservation of natural forests and meeting the basic needs of the people living in or near the forests. Conservation of Plants and Animals Introduction 
What is conservation? Though the word wildlife is often used to mean wild animals found in the forests, but it actually includes all organisms, that is plants, as well as animals living in natural habitats. From the environmental point of view, each species plays its own role in the ecosystem. It is linked to several other species through food chains. Destroying or depleting the population of one species can have an impact on many other species. Need of conservation. We know that plants and animals play an important role in our lives, yours and of course mine. Plants provide food, fresh air, shelter for animals, and many other things. Animals, too provide us with lots of useful things, isn't it? But do we really value their importance? We are directly or indirectly responsible for disturbing the nature. Deforestation is one of the activities resulting in adverse effects on nature. Do you know what is the purpose of making national parks? wildlife sanctuaries and biosphere reserves as deforestation also affects wildlife government is taking major steps for conservation of plants and animals it is also our duty to protect nature in some or the other way deforestation Causes of deforestation A great variety of plants and animals exist on the earth. They are essential for the well-being and survival of mankind. Today a major threat to survival of this organization is deforestation. We know that deforestation means clearing of forests and using that land for other purposes. Trees in the forest are cut for some of the purposes are as follows. For procuring land for cultivation, building houses and factories, making furniture or using wood as fuel. Besides these, some natural causes of deforestation are forest fires and severe drought. Consequences of Deforestation Deforestation increases the temperature and pollution level on the earth. It increases the level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Groundwater level also gets lowered. Now deforestation disturbs the balance in nature. If cutting of trees continues, rainfall and the fertility of the soil will decrease. Moreover, there will be increased chances of natural calamities such as floods and droughts. Recall that plants need carbon dioxide for photosynthesis. Fewer trees would mean that less carbon dioxide will be used up, resulting in its increased amount in the atmosphere. Now this will lead to global warming as carbon dioxide traps the heat rays reflected by the earth. 
the increase in temperature on the earth disturbs the water cycle and may reduce rainfall. So what happens then? Well, this could cause droughts. Deforestation is a major cause which leads to the change in soil properties. Physical properties of the soil get affected by plantation and vegetation. Trees. Now they are very important because trees prevent soil erosion. So, fewer trees result in more soil erosion. Removal of the top layer of the soil exposes the lower, hard and rocky layers. This soil has less humus and is less fertile. Gradually, the fertile land gets converted into deserts. It is called desertification. Deforestation also leads to a decrease in the water holding capacity of the soil. The movement of water from the soil surface into the ground, that is, infiltration rate, is reduced. So, there are floods. The other properties of the soil, like nutrient content, texture, etc., also changes because of deforestation. 